Yes, hello. <laughs> Good morning. Take one step back. Take two steps back. Yes. Good afternoon. Has everyone got their photos? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So we take a few steps back when we enter your frame and spoil it considerably, but so, so we can help you get your questions answered. Um, welcome. Thank yes, you. Archer, thank, thank you for you. being here. I know there's a lot of uh, excitement about your session. You had a great um, event yesterday with university students. Um, we're going to take questions um, by phone and we have about 25 minutes to 30 minutes. So let's start. Hands. And you can say where you're from. Yes. Publication and what your question is. Good afternoon, Jay. Good afternoon. How are you? Good to see you again. Yeah, thank you. Uh, there is one thing that I want to ask. That is, yes. I am Srinivas from Delhi, Prabhat, Pune, Maharashtra. You what? Um, that's his name and that's the publication. Maharashtra. Yes. Yes. So the thing is that, uh, in your opinion, do awards really matter for an author? Like Good Nobel, like Pulitzer. <laughs> In India or the rest of the world? The rest of the world, the anyway. The world or yeah. India. India, for me, because I'm a storyteller, R.K. Narayan. I okay. think he's a yes. truly wonderful writer storyteller. And I agree with Graham Greene that he should have got the Nobel Prize. Oh. He should have got the Nobel Prize. Yes. Worldwide, the Austrian author. Sorry. Yes. I'll, I'll get them back to you. Don't worry. Uh, no, no. Uh, Stefan Zweig, who wrote a book called uh, Beware of Pity, which I think is an absolute masterpiece. Yeah, well. Genuinely Great. a masterpiece. And to the question of Because he's a, he's a writer <coughs> and a storyteller. Oh. And that's rare. Uh, and to the question if you think awards matter to an author, do you think awards should matter? Do I think? Awards should matter. Awards should matter. Awards, literary awards and prizes. Is that important? <laughs> or in a different way, what is the best? Uh, he's asking for literary awards, do they matter? Awards? Yeah. Well, they're for really, awards are for literary giants. They're for people who, um, they're known as great writers. Storytellers very rarely win awards. Okay. Very rare. Yeah. Okay, so next question. Oh, next Can you question. pass the mic? Yes, yes, yes. Hello, sir. <coughs> this is Maima from Modest Directory. So, you have visited India a few times before this, but you have chosen to debut at the ZJLF Festival this time with Heads You Win. So, what prompted you to make this debut and come to India this time? Well, um, very kindly, the festival had been inviting me for several years, and I kept getting messages. This was the biggest festival on earth, oh. and I was silly not to go. Yeah, uh, so that influenced me tremendously, and then very kindly, one of your universities uh, awarded me a Doctor of Literature, and as my wife has three uh, honorary degrees, and I have none. That's <laughs> 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 very tempted to come. But I've been round the outside, and I've been, I mean, this is incredible. I've never seen anything like it in my life, ever. So it's one hell of a festival. Hello, sir. I'm Karishma from Modest Magazine. And uh, so basically, India loves you a lot. And what do you love the most about India? Cricket. Oh, great. <laughs> Wasn't it wonderful to meet the Australians? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was fabulous. Uh, I guess two things. One, the Indian people are incredibly gentle and kind compared with almost any nation on earth. And I think what excites me now is it's become clear to me that the next generation of women in India are going to run India. God help the stupid men, I have to tell you. These, this lot are going to take over. Let me warn you. <laughs> Hello sir, this is Meera from Salam Bahrain magazine. My question is, what is your view on censorship imposed on books? I'm sorry, this noise in the background is getting me. Censorship? No! Let anybody read. If people write stupid stuff, are you referring to sex or violence or bad language or 
Are you referring to anything in particular? Are you what are you referring to when you talk about censorship? Are you referring to sex, violence, bad language? Religion, religion. religion. Oh, it's very hard for an Englishman to answer that question <laughs> because we're not very religious. <laughs> and in Britain, we've learned to discriminate. I hope we have. Um, and just dismiss it. I mean, one of the great things about my country, it was one of the things I truly love, is we allow stupid people to stand up on soapboxes and say stupid things. And that's very healthy. It's healthy to get it out in the open and get it dealt with and let intelligent people decide. I obviously would be more careful with the very young because they can be influenced. But your question applies to India, really. And I am not qualified to answer it. In England, I could answer it, but I'm not qualified to answer it. Hello, sir. My name is Sherajah, and I'm from Rashtrakoot. After all these years of writing, are you a more intuitive writer or a you know more method uh, methodical writer? Like, do you write by method or intuition? I'm totally a storyteller. I, I, I sometimes don't know what's on the next page. I have been known not to know what's on the next line. Ooh. Some people plot everything out. They know exactly where they're going, what they're doing. I haven't got a clue. In fact, the book I'm writing at the moment, I've decided because so many people have been writing to me about the Clifton Chronicles, to take Harry Clifton's hero, William Warwick, and do seven books on him. And I've just done the first draft. I changed the last line the morning I wrote it. Oh. I, I thought I had a last line, and as I was writing, I got another one. So no, I haven't got a clue, I'm totally intuitive. Totally. I think that's the difference between a writer and a storyteller. Yes. And my view has always been, this hasn't changed. My view has always been that if I know where I'm going, you'll know where I'm going. But if I don't know where I'm going, how the hell can you know where I'm going? Oh, oh great. Uh, hi, sir. Here. Here. Hi. Hi, I'm Garvita. I'm from the Quint. We know about how much you love cricket and we could I could not not ask you a cricket question. Uh, do you think this team is one of the best teams that we have? <laughs> Unquestionably, you've got two of the greatest batsmen that have ever lived. <laughs> I'm a huge Kohli fan who isn't. He's probably the best batsman in the world. But I think Pajura's pretty tanky though. Those three centuries against the Australians were remarkable. Uh, I was very interested in Mr. Kohli's remarks afterwards, <laughs> after the matches were over. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, you went on to win the one days as well. Yeah, I think this is probably as great a team. My personal hero remains Roald Rabbit. I just think his style is so wonderful. So wonderful. I love it. It's a privilege to watch him. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, and of course, Sachin Tendulkar. But from my own days, the, the Nawaba Patodi was a friend when I was a young man. So the love of Indian cricket has been going on for many, many years and will continue until you're at Lord's. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. There's a gentleman there. And then, oh, sorry. Yeah. I'm uh, Radha from uh, Indian, Indian Retail News. And uh, I'd like to know. Uh, is your stories uh, based on experience or uh, otherwise? Totally invention. Yeah. I always tell young people who come to see me about writing, write about what you know about. If your mother's a hairdresser, write about hairdressing. If you go on a bicycle to work every day, write about that and the people you see and what happens. So I've been in the world of politics, business, the theatre, and so I guess they all get into the books. So I always say, yeah, write about it. You feel it, don't you? I mean, like the classic example is Jane Austen. Born in a small town. Yes. She writes about life in a small town. By the way, we're talking about one of the greatest storytellers who ever lived. First book is about a mother trying to get rid of four children, four girls. 
Second book, a mother trying to get rid of three girls. Third book, a mother trying to get rid of two girls. Fourth book, a girl trying to get rid of. <laughs> Why do you read them all? Why do you turn the page? Because she's a genius. But she wrote about, to take your point, what she knew about. Mm. She stuck to that little town and these poor desperate sisters trying to get married. You think, well, what's in that? It's wonderful, that's what's in that. Dickens wrote about London. He wrote about what he saw in London. He saw the poverty, he saw the other things. So you should write about what you feel safe with. Really. Bronte. Bronte is also. Yes. Bronte. Yeah. But then where does it make sense? Yes. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. I'm sorry, you're fighting that noise over there. Okay. I'm Rajeshwari from Hyderabad. Hyderabad. She's from Hyderabad. Hyderabad, yes. 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 Yeah. We had a lovely time in Hyderabad. Uh, I wanted That's to. That's the mad city where all the IT people are. Yeah, yeah, uh, yes, yes, certainly. Okay. Yes. I'll tell you a story about that. I was in Hyderabad. And it's yeah. become so middle class that everyone's got a car. Yeah. They all have smart <laughs> cars in Hyderabad. Yes. And I was coming from the airport into Hyderabad, and that most beautiful woman passed me when I stopped. In between getting from seeing her the first time to my hotel, I overtook her seven times. And she overtook me eight times. <laughs> Any longer, we'd have been engaged. <laughs> you should have seen you more often in Hyderabad then. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sir, I would just like to go back to R.K. Narayan. And uh, anything in particular you like about him? Because you said he, he should have won the Well, R.K. Narayan's genius, going back to your point, R.K. Narayan's genius, he can take a small taxpayer in a tiny village mm. who's got problems with his wife and children. Hello, why don't you all have a go at that? But he <laughs> makes you turn the page. Kavate. Mogoldi Days is a work of genius. A work of genius. A little about your new book, sir. Oh, can you talk about your new book? Well, the inspiration came from uh, Colin Powell. Colin Powell's uh, mother from Jamaica had to make the decision whether to go to Great Britain, take Colin to Great Britain, or take him to the United States. I thought this was a fascinating thing. What if Colin Powell had gone to Britain? He'd never have become an officer in the British Army. He would never have become Foreign Secretary. He could today because we now have a Pakistani Home Secretary. So he could today. The world has changed. So I thought the concept of putting him in both places, the same human being, a Russian, escaping from Russia, going to Britain, going to America, and then following two separate lives. Great. I thought that was a... But the inspiration came from Colin Powell. There's a... Gentlemen, also, can I have a